Welcome today. It's really, really great to be here again. Uh, just wanting to love on Jesus and uh, share something that God's put on my heart for you today. Uh, welcome to Global Connections Church. Uh, Greg and Joanne are still uh, in isolation over there in America. And uh, they will be broadcasting on Sunday at 10 o'clock through TVN Pacific. Make sure that you tune in for that. And I know that you'll be thoroughly, thoroughly blessed. We're living in an amazing time. It's a, it is really, really an exciting time that we're living in. Uh, last week when we were here uh, sharing, uh, we were praying for the sick and uh, Jason, our sound man, was here and uh, while we were praying, he got healed. So Jason, why don't you just quickly come up and tell us what God did for you. Yeah, thanks, Neil. It was uh, amazing last week as Neil was praying. I was blessed to actually be here in the room and uh, I'd had a, a quite a sore ankle for a couple of weeks and uh, as soon as Neil finished praying, the uh, Holy Spirit came over me and my leg was healed. Uh, interestingly enough, I was telling uh, Pastor Neil earlier that uh, I testified to that uh, to my wife and as soon as I did the test, test of, as soon as I testified, uh, the pain came back briefly. So the enemy wants to stop us, but uh, yeah. Holy Spirit's stronger than that, so praise yeah. God. Yeah, amen. That's what we've got to understand. We've got an enemy out there that wants to stop us, but it's not a time to be stopped. I believe it's a time to speak loud and clear. We're living in an amazing time. This is, an, I, I think, one of the most exciting times in the history of humanity. This could be that, spoken by the prophet Joel when he said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And I'm believing for a great outpouring of his spirit that will touch this nation and the nations of the world. Uh, and let's just pray today. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, my God, that you're alive and well and that you're moving mightily. Lord, that you're touching your church, you're touching your people. Lord, that you've got a dream, you've got a dream, my God, that, that all people would come to the knowledge of our God. And Father, I'm praying today for people that perhaps do not know you, that have never, ever even considered you. Father, somehow or other, by your Spirit, you would seep deep inside them, my God, and cause them to begin to inquire. Lord, that they would knock on the door, and Lord, that you would open that door to them, and they would find salvation, they'd find reality, they'd find healing, they'd find deliverance. They would find you, Jesus, and for that we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So as I said before, I believe it is an exciting time that we're living in. It's not a time to be silent. It's not a time to hide. It's not a time to allow fear to grip us because that's what the enemy would want to do. Just like with Jason, when he started to testify, that pain came back just for a few seconds. And, and I know a lot of people that are fearful of even testifying of what God has done for them because many times they think they're going to lose it. But that, you've got to understand that's a lie of the devil. And Jesus says, I want you to tell the world. Go and tell everybody what you've seen and what you've heard. Go and tell people what I've done for you. That man that was a maniac that Jesus delivered, that man that was running naked in the tombs, that hopelessness and everything was around his life. When he found Christ, when Jesus touched him and, and he was totally delivered and totally set free. When he said, Jesus, I just want to come with you, I want to be with you. He said, look, he said, no, I want you to go back and tell everybody the good things that God has done for you today. And that's what it's about. I believe it's the time to shout it out. And I want to just share some scriptures with you today and some thoughts that I have. I believe that there's never been a day like this day. We serve a risen saviour. He's alive. He's in the world today. Amen. I believe that this time, uh, it's a time for all believers that we should shine for Jesus. And I want to just read some scriptures today. It's found in Isaiah chapter 60. And I think we all know this scripture so well. But I just want to, again, uh, bring it to, th to the fore. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Everybody say, has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I don't know about you, but when I got born again, something touched me. Supernatural power came into my life. I was touched by an almighty God. And the glory of God came upon me. And, and it touched me and it changed my life. It just didn't, you know, give me a band-aid so I could get through life. 
It totally changed me. It totally transformed me. I became a brand new man. Things that held me bound were no longer there. I was totally delivered, totally set free. And I'm excited about that. It says, Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness of people, but the Lord will arise over you, and His glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles, or the unsaved, shall come to your light, the kings to the brightness of your shining. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather, uh, they come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be nursed by your side. You shall see and become radiant, and your heart will swell with joy. Amen. What an amazing, uh, just uh, words, but they carry so much. They, they carry the power of God. They carry hope. They carry our future. Let me just go through some of these things. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. It's not somewhere in the future, but it has already come. It's already upon us. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We are to be a reflection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus wants to shine through us. He wants the world to see that He is alive. And at the moment, we are His representatives on planet Earth. We are the people that He is, that he is using, and He wants to use us in a mighty way. We saw the children of Israel when the enemy came, when the Goliath came. It says that the people ran. The, the men of, of Bala ran and they hid in caves and they hid in their tents and they, and they couldn't be seen. But I want to say this, it's not a time to hide. It's a time now to speak out and be bold. It's time to share what Jesus Christ has done for us. Amen. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We are to be those reflections. It says, darkness shall cover the earth and deep, deep darkness over the people. All of the earth right now is covered in fear, in uncertainty, and in darkness. It's not just touched one little part. It's touched the whole world. In the past, it may have been an earthquake here, or a volcano over there, or fires, or floods, or famine, or whatever it might be. But this virus has covered the whole earth. The whole earth is, is affecting it. It's time to shine. It's time to shine. His glory will be uh, seen upon us. I, I, I believe it's, it, it, it is an amazing time that we're living in. If I keep repeating that, please, it's because it's so much inside me. I don't want to be silent in this hour. I want to shout it out. I want to, I, I want to declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. It says, it says, and the Gentiles, the unbelievers, shall come to your light. This could be the greatest harvest of souls that this world has ever seen. Lift up your eyes. Your sons and your daughters are coming back. What an amazing promise. When we see, uh, when we, when we see souls added to the kingdom and our sons and our daughters coming back by our sides, our hearts will swell with joy. Our hearts will swell with joy. That, oh, I'm so excited. I've been in places and I've seen people and I've, I've you know, had our, when we had our school many, many years ago and watching children finding God and being impacted by the Spirit of God and seeing young men and young women and they're just with tears rolling down the, their faces as they, as they worshipped, as they began to shine for Jesus. As we saw, as I saw that, my heart would swell with joy. I would be so excited about what God is doing. But what I want to say at this time is this in this time of shaking. You see, when shaking happens, there's a separation. Could be the sheep and the goats. When you shake milk, you get milk and you shake it long enough, it starts to separate. It separate, separates the, the, the curds and the, and, the, and the, obviously I don't know what I'm talking about, but something happens and you end up with butter. There's a separation that takes place and, and shaking is a good thing. Shaking can be a good thing, but in this time of shaking, is the church being tested? Is this a time of testing to see where our faith really lies? To see really what's on the inside? In Luke 4, chapter 2, it says, Jesus being tempted, tempted 
Another word for tempted is testing. For 40 days, Jesus' ministry on earth was as a man. He could have failed, but he had his eyes on God. He had his eyes on the answer. He had his eyes on the promise. He knew that God had him on an assignment. He knew that no weapon formed against him can prosper. He knew that God was with him. And it's a time there in time of testing when he kept his faith and he kept his eyes on the Word of God and he quoted the Word of God. In Mark 4 verse 37, the disciples, as we know, Jesus spoke to the disciples and said, let's go over the other side. And as they were going over the other side, a great storm and winds and and waves and it were beating into the boat and the boats began to fill. Uh, You know, and I believe it was a testing for them because, you see, their faith was in their boat. Their faith was in their experience on the water. Your faith may be in the church that you go to. Your faith may be in something, I don't know what it's in, but unless your faith is grounded on the rock, on the rock Christ Jesus, we can build on the sand and, and, and we'll be shaken. And when the shaking comes, there'll be a great fall or, or else we will stand. I want to encourage you today, Get your eyes off different things. I would love to say that this Global Connections Church has got all the answers. No, we don't. We're just one person. We're just one group of people. But Jesus Christ is the same. He is God. Amen. Get your eyes on Jesus. And they, they had their eyes on most probably what they felt secure in the boat. But now they've been in many storms, I would imagine, but it's filling and, it's, and, and, and water's coming into the boat and they're perishing. And so they go up and they wake the master and they say, don't you care, we're perishing here. By now the boat is sinking. They're being tested. Jesus said to them, why are you so fearful? And ha- how is it you have no faith? Is the church being tested now to see what we trust in, where our faith lies. That's why we at this time must rise and shine. It's not a time to be silent. It's a time to sing praises to God. It's time to fill your house with with worship and praise. Get some good worship tapes. Fill Fill your mind with the Word of God. Dwell on these things. Feed on these things. We must rise and shine and let the glory of the Lord rise over us, our neighbors and our friends, whenever they see us. I've got a saying, and most of you would have already heard it when people say, how are you, Neil? I say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I don't care what you say about me, but I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We must have confidence in God's unseen reality. Let me say that again. We must have confidence in God's unseen reality. There's something more real than what we can see in the natural, what our senses can sense. That's called faith. Faith. This is God's definition of faith. Faith is an assurance, an inward conviction of something we can't see It means being convinced of the reality of an unseen spiritual realm in which God has met every one of our needs. He said, I have met every one of your needs according to my riches in glory. In 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 16, Elijah said to Gehazi, Do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. In 6, at verse 17, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. <laughs> there are more for us than be against us. What do you see today? What do you see? Do you see just the coronavirus? Do you see devastation? Do you see brokenness? Do you see hurts? Whatever, whatever, whatever. What do you see today? Or are you looking beyond? Are you looking out into the realm of the Spirit? Are you, look, are you, are you, are you being, allowing God to open the eyes of your understanding? 
that, that somehow or other he might be able to enlighten us that I know for a fact that God is not up in heaven fretting today. He's not up in heaven saying, oh my goodness, what is happening down there? It's chaos. No, I believe that this could be a test to the church. I believe that we are entering into our finest hour. Oh, if there's ever been a time that we, the church, need to have an eye opened to see what God is doing. We need as believers to have our eyes open. Remember, he said, I will never ever leave you nor forsake you. That's Hebrews 13, verse 5. Only believe all things are possible. Matthew 19, 26. Noah built an ark before he saw any rain. He acted on what God told him to do. Noah, such a story. I remember I was preaching one time about Noah. There's a gentleman and his wife that had been brought by, by, their father, by his father-in-law to church. And I was pre- preaching about Noah and he thought, this idiot. Because you see, that's what they would have been saying to Noah as he was building an ark in the middle of whoop-whoop. As he's building an ark and, and they'll say, what are you doing? I'm building an ark. Why? Because there's going to come a flood. And people would have looked at him and laughed and they would have jeered and they would have mocked him and they would have you know, had all kinds of jokes about him. They would have said all kinds of things and, and it was no different in those days as, as I was preaching about Noah and talking about the great flood and, and all the things that God had done, how he'd protected his people, how he'd saved those that loved him. This man was sitting back with his arms folded saying, what an idiot. What an idiot. He believes that. But you see, that man that day, he went home gloriously saved. He and his wife. Because his wife had an amazing encounter with God. This God, this Jesus that I'm talking to you about, the one that goes beyond our natural thinking. She had some horrific pains and different conditions in her body that God totally delivered her from that day. Totally delivered her. That gentleman and his wife, he had an encounter with God also. That day they went home rejoicing, they went home praising their God. They had an encounter with God. Friend, it's not a matter of just going to church. We need to have an encounter with Almighty God. We need the supernatural power of God to come afresh over our lives. Oh God, would you pour out your Spirit again over us? Would you touch us again, my God? Would, could this be a day when you would pour out your Spirit again and the church of the living God would begin to revive? The sleeping giant called the church will be awakened by the fire. There will be such great power and authority. Amen. Oh, that man went home that day believing and, and was touched by a mighty power of God. Elijah had, uh, Elisha had total confidence in God. That day as the, as the Syrian army surrounded him, his eyes were not on the army, his eyes were on God. His eyes were on God. Hebrews 11 verse 1 Amplified Bible says this, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for and the conviction of their reality. The conviction of their reality. Faith is perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Elisha was conscious of an unseen reality. An unseen reality. That might seem gobbledygook to you. That might, might seem, you know, hocus pocus even. But friend, we are surrounded today by angels, by a great cloud of witnesses. We're talking about supernatural today. We're talking about supernatural power. And this man is, is in the scriptures there that he was conscious of this unseen reality when he and his servant were surrounded by a Syrian army. The servant was full of fear, but Elisha was conscious of a higher reality. They both saw the same picture. Nan and I lived in America for three years. We lived the first six months at a friend's farmhouse. 
I was in the kitchen or somewhere upstairs anyhow, and Nance was down in the, in the garage, was a, had a few steps up into the house. And all of a sudden I heard this blood-curdling scream. And, and terror flooded through me. I didn't know we were on a property there. We heard all the stories about mountain lions and and I know we'd seen a lot of coyotes and rattlesnakes were there and, and other uh, critters. And I didn't know what was going on, but I ran down the stairs to Nancy and she was there running on the spot in the middle of the garage. And as I walked up to her in her fashion, she grabbed me by the arm and, and it was like a vice grabbed hold of me. And I looked at her and I said, what, 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 what's going on? What's, what's happening? She said, a rat. I thought, a rat? I can, I can handle a rat. <laughs> if it was a mountain lion, I'd have trouble, but a rat I can handle. And uh, she said, it ran over there behind those boxes. And uh, she hurried back upstairs and left me there. And so I thought, oh man, this is my moment that I can shine. <laughs> And so I walked over to the boxes and I started to, because uh, I had a bit of a stick with me, I was going to do something with this rat. And I started to open it, pull the boxes apart, and as I did, there was this little ball of fluff. But it wasn't a rat, it was a little bunny. Baby, baby bunny. When I picked it up, it barely could fit in the palm of my hand. And I called out to Nancy, I said, Nancy, come and have a look. And she was still terrified. And she was still up there. What is what? I said, come and have a look. Come, come. Anyhow, she slowly came out through the door and came down to me. And I showed her this little bunny in my hand. And all of a sudden she said, I want it. <laughs> I want to keep it. And, and she took it and she cuddled it. See, what do you see today? Do you see a rat or do you see a bunny? <laughs> what do you see today? Do you, do you see fear or, or, or do you see an opportunity? See, it's, we're all seeing the same. You see disaster or an opportunity. It's time, to, I believe, to rise up. We can't live in fear. We've got to live believing God. Rise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We've got more going for us than, than we could ever, ever imagine. In Hebrews 13, verse 8, it says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance, the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. One of my favorite scriptures at the moment is this, in 1 John 5, 4 and 5, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is a victory that overcomes the world our faith. Friend, if you do not have a faith, you need to have a faith in God. You can't have a faith in this or that. Our government, praise God for the work that they're doing. Praise God for everything that everybody is doing and they're doing the best of their ability. But I want to tell you there's a higher law. There's something that's more powerful. It's faith in God. It's faith that will move the mountains. Let me just start this again. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. If you want victory in this hour, friend, have a faith in God. Get a hold of God. Let God get around your life. Let Jesus be your Lord. Let Him be your Savior. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God... He's talking about you. Jesus rose from the dead. You might be listening to me today and you might even be thinking, how stupid is that? He believes that. But I want to tell you, just like that man, somehow or other God got hold of him. Somehow or other God broke through that hard outer crust and touched him in his heart. And I'm praying today that God would, would somehow or other penetrate deep, inside of you, deep right into your heart and touch you deep on the inside so that God can get in there and touch something that's more real than anything else. You, I, I know when I got born again, it was, it was not just something that I did. I just didn't sign a role. I didn't join a church. 
I got born again. God touched me. I was totally changed. I, I, I sensed the presence of God. Friend, it's very, very real. Very, very real. Very, very real. If you can believe that Jesus Christ is a Son of God, Jesus paid the price in full for your salvation, you can be saved. Just simply today, call on Him. See, you, I've, I've heard people say, because you see, even in, in this Christian world we live, there's so many voices today. There's so many opinions about this and that. Where, where people are, confusion is reigning over the nations of the world because people don't know whether they're coming or going. They don't, we're hearing so many conflicting reports. There's, there's reports that the virus was, was originated in China, man-made. There are reports that, that, you know, that there's this virus, they're going to put a needle in us and we're going to get this and we're going to get that. I, I really don't know. All I know is that at this point of time, I have to keep my eye on Jesus. I've got to know that no weapon formed against me will prosper. But I've heard people that, that because of the confusion that reigns, we've heard so many different stories about uh, Christianity. There's so many different denominations. There's so many different opinions. And I've heard people say, Neil, I am just confused. I don't really know. But somehow or other, inside them, they've cried out. They said, God, if you're real. See, God sees a person's heart. You can say that today and, and, and just be having a joke or trying to take the mickey out of us. You can't do that to God because God knows you. He knows your heart. He knows everything about you. But today, if, if you could just say, Jesus, if you are real, and if you really did pay the price for my sin, and you really, really, really did die for me, and you rose again, I want to know you. I want to know you. Would you reveal yourself to me? Would you help me find you? Friend, I want to tell you that prayer has been prayed all over the world, and many, many people today have said somehow or other, supernaturally, God showed them something because he loves you more than you could ever imagine or think. I'm asking you today to give your life to Jesus. Let me pray for you today. If you're, if you're even considering, if, you're, if today you're saying, Neil, I want to know Jesus. I, I, want to know, I want him to come into my life. I, I want him to be my Lord. I want him to help me. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your son who died for us. I pray for every person, my God, today that is listening to this. Pray, my God, that we would have an assurance. We would have a confidence that we're born again. If not, Father, I pray that they would pray this prayer. Jesus, would you come into my life? Would you forgive me my sins? Would you set me free? I want to know you. I want to know you. I believe today that you are the Son of God that you died for me. You paid the price in full. And today I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for coming into my heart. Thank you for coming into my life. Thank you for saving me. Friends, today it's been a great pleasure, a great honor to be able to come into your lounge rooms and talk to you. I long so much to to be able to come and fellowship and sit and worship and praise. and It's a little bit strange doing it this way, but it's still very, very real. I, I sense the presence of God today. I sense his anointing going out, touching people. If you're sick in your body, if you need healing, Hazel, we just pray for you today. Levi, we pray for you today. We pray for you today, Father. We're lifting them to you, my God. We're lifting others to you today. Those that have been afflicted, those that are in pain, those that just need that touch. I'm asking you, Jesus, to come and touch them. Heal them. Satan, we break your power. We curse your works. We rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We command you, devil. 
Get out of them. Take your sickness with you. Set people free, Jesus, I pray today, that we will give you all the praise, we'll give you all the glory. And for that, my God, we thank you. We thank you. Don't forget, folks, uh, we'll be back again next week. Uh, and um, we're just reminding you too that Greg and Joanne will be uh, ministering uh, on Sunday morning at uh, 10 o'clock. That's through uh, TBN Pacific. Uh, if you're having any trouble um, getting hold of that, uh, we've got some information on the screen that you can get hold of somebody that could perhaps help you to, uh, to get involved with that and, and uh, be blessed by that. I, I just want to say how much I love you and appreciate you guys. And have an amazing week. Ha have a, have a God-given week, but shine. Shine, Jesus, shine. Oh, shine, Jesus, shine. Amen and amen. God bless you.